And welcome to Nerd Stalker. I am Adolfo Ferranda. I'm Greg Blurry, aka Social Greg, on Twitter for the Nerd Stalker Media Network. Hey, man, uh, coronavirus uh, podcast number two. Here we are. I know the the new normal. The first thing I wanted to talk about. There's this crazy story in the news of a guy who derailed a plane, a train, in the port of Los Angeles. So he was an actual engineer of the train, or of a train, I should say. And he was trying to ram the USS Mercy, which is a giant hospital-like ship that just ported down there. (laughs) It's a massive ship. And he actually did succeed in derailing the engine of a train that he took and got within two football fields (laughs) of this train. Uh, So apparently he thought it was some sort of odd thing that this uh, boat was uh, there and thought it was some sort of government type of situation, um, very conspiracy theory type of thing. And he went for it. <laughs> and somehow he derailed this train and got uh, got where he did. I just It's just such a weird, weird story. And, and so sort of a sign of how bizarre the times are right now. Yeah, that one caught me by surprise. Like, Oh my God. You know, I saw that come through my feed and it was just like, I had to like look at it twice, three times, four times. Cause I just couldn't believe it actually. Um, it's just weird. People theory. behave in weird ways. You know what I mean? At, uh, during times of stress, <laughs> but on to something more pleasant. Uh, what is this photographer's fund? No, it's just something interesting. I thought, uh, that I'd like to share is that it, it, it's not specifically for, you know, about the photographers, of course it is, but, you know, a lot of people are doing these GoFundMe campaigns for people who were like gig workers, right? Um, Mm. Creatives, people who rely on going out every time, videographers, um, cinematographers, movie makers, whatever you want to call it, you know, the the industries are shut down, essentially, you know, no one could go outside. Um, And so a lot of them don't have any regular income because either one that they can't get new business because no one needs a photographer right now, you know, mm-hmm. work for the news. And two, uh, a lot of their projects have been canceled. A lot of these, you know, a lot of these, I, I didn't kind of realize this whole effect of like events have caused now, you know, closure of events due to all this. Yeah. It's really caused all of these, like all this ecosystem kind of just go away as well. You know, at events yeah. they need photographers, at events they need videographers, at events yeah. they need... Uh, marketing people and they need social media people now with no events there's no you know in virtual events you don't need any of that yeah know? true that's interesting you know it's yeah and so I, I think there's a lot of gofundme campaigns if you guys just go check it out if you're if you're so inclined to donate to some of these people there's a lot yeah. of um uh, you know um artists that are you know just you know, their world has stopped because of all this and so they need help so it was just interesting to kind of catch something like that and you know i i think you know these photographers aren't any different than any other business that like you know, even hairdressers right I mean, yeah i'm seeing know. a lot of those gofundmes for everyone yeah yeah so you know right something now. to look at so what's this let's move on to the next one what's this thing called preppers preppers so um i follow all kinds of uh type of stuff i'm i'm if you what you will say a lightweight closet prepper i have been for a long time right and i love following these kind of niche type of things like whatever you know things that i know i want to like tiny van living or maybe i will at some point or van living you know van life or tiny homes or you know that kind of crazy stuff i'm not even much of a camper at all you know and i and i love i'm enamored by all these kind of these sectors and one of them are these people who are known as preppers, right? They're people who prepare for whatever it may be, the worst, right? It could be like a nuclear strike or a chemical strike or a pandemic in this case, right? Or who yeah. knows what, an economy collapse. And I follow all these different individuals just because they're fascinating. They do all these what look like really bizarre to other people until now where they look like, you know, geniuses in a way. Um, to some extent, right? Uh, so, so some of which are more extreme than others and sort of the, the top level ones that I'm following that I would recommend people just take a peek at, one of which is a, an individual on YouTube, he's known as City Prepper, City Prepper, and I'll leave the link in the show notes. Um, and he is a good um, sort of mindset on the thing. He comes across very eloquently, very calm uh, about what you know you can do to prepare 
uh, in events such as this or other type of events um, in terms wow. of you know food, energy, uh, security, and these type of things that uh, that people should be aware of to some extent when you know when we're not uh, in a you know when we're not in a plentiful type of situation, if you will. Uh, another uh, prepper uh, YouTube channel that I enjoy watching maybe is the next level up is Canadian Prepper is what he's called. And he's a more of an outdoor kind of extreme type of prepper where you have like the mobile shovel, the all-in-one saw type of thing, you know, uh, maybe meals ready to eat kind of thing. And then uh, finally, I have another one that's on the more sort of newsy type of, I don't know. Um, yeah. If you can deal with like a more hardcore news, uh, his name is, uh, he goes by Full Spectrum Survivor on YouTube. Very interesting. He, he does these scary videos though, because it's like a close up on his face and he has these big blue eyes and he's bald and he looks really scary. Like, yeah, I wish he would back out. He's always super intense. Um, <laughs> but his information is, is usually, you know, something to keep an eye on. You know, I, I, I'm one of those people that want, my media that I consume is all on all sides because I, I consume far right media. I consume far left media. I can consume foreign media of all kinds, Russian, Al Jazeera, uh, U.S. national, whatever, you know, because I find that the truth tends to be sometimes uh, typically in the gray areas, right, or, or something, or perhaps, perhaps not. Yeah. Uh, so I thought I would just pass that along, just interesting things to peek at. Well, so, so preppers are survivalists, I guess, you know, people who want to survive these these events right i guess is that how i look at it yeah it could be it could be seen as that yeah mm -hmm. okay okay I, I i i yeah i never heard of the word prepper so this is good i mean yeah I'm, prepare I'm, prepper yeah yeah, pre yeah. <laughs> but i mean you know you know i'm not as red as as my friend over here Adolfo yeah Colombia. we we are not the preppers of zoom setups and uh, <laughs> that's for sure <laughs> So Greg, oh. sticking on the um, pandemic sort of a tip, this coronavirus and, and its effects with food, what, what do we got here? Yeah, I wanted to talk to you about that. I, 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 it, it, when you posted this the other day, I think you just did it yesterday, it made me stop and think because I'm, I'm, my behavior has changed, right? I mean, my, you know, my home uh, roommate here almost, almost like blocks my body as I go out the door because she doesn't want me to go to the supermarket mm -hmm. and like, okay, I guess we'll buy it online. But then I've always thought, you know, what I haven't done in the past is that um, buying online to me was, I always thought somewhat expensive. Right. Yeah. But, but now the cost versus risk thing is yeah. now flipped. Right. 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 And, and, and it's still like, I'm still a little bit queasy about someone else picking up food for me. Mm -hmm. uh, I wanted to ask what your thoughts were on that. Yeah, so I am a big fan now suddenly of services like Instacart is what I'm using. Unfortunately, the wait times have been, that's another sort of downfall. Um, you know, have been a little bit of, uh, it's been like a five day average here where I'm at in uh, Marin County. Um, so you have to plan ahead of time. You know, it seemed like a pain in the butt at first. One time we did it though. It's really great because for us, they went to a local grocery store called Safeway. Plus they go to other places like Sprouts and Costco, um, Petco and all these things all at once. So you can do one go order out, you know, in one go and you get maybe one or two different delivery drivers, depending on people to pick your stuff. And, uh, you also pick up sort of backup sort of options too. Now, you do have to factor in every time you do physically or yourself want to go to the grocery store, you are putting your, your life on the line. It really is sort of that type of situation. Now, have I done that a couple of times? Yes. Am I the weirdo wearing rubber gloves and masks when I do go to those stores? Yes. Am I trying to time my visits to those stores in oddball hours? Yes. I'm trying to go in morning hours and I've got a list. And I'm being really uh, um, strategic about it as I can. I'm really trying not to because you're right. And am I going to smaller stores and trying not to go to bigger stores? Yes. Am I avoiding Costco? Yes. Am I paying a 20% surcharge knowing that I'm going to smaller grocery store versus a Safeway, a big box store or something? Yeah, because I know there's going to be fewer people. So you need to weigh all these different things, you know. And it seems right now like the safest one is these delivery services, like you mentioned, Greg. Yeah, I, I, I mean... I, and I'm still a little bit confused about it. My roommate has to kind of straighten me all out on this because it's like, um, 
you know, there's Whole Foods. I'm, I'm an Amazon Prime person, right? So, mm-hmm. okay, there's Whole Foods, Amazon Fresh, and then yeah. there's another yeah. third one, right? And I'm like, you know, and then I tried to do um, Safeway delivers, and yeah. they're not, they don't have any open ones, and you know, and it's and it's weird. It's almost kind of like it's like I have to pay attention now to the apps and, and load, preload my cart. So yeah. if I see the opening come in, I, I press the button. Right. So it's like, yeah. it's an interesting way I'm reacting to this. It's kind of like almost like social media. I'm like waiting. I'm yeah. Waiting like it's interesting to you say to that. Thing. Cause this yeah. morning I went uh, and I opened Instacart cause today I actually had to go to the store. Um, and it said five hours and i'm like great and so i'm filling up my car as quickly as i can by the time i completed it it said you know uh five days or seven days or something like that and i'm like damn it and so i i'm just like forget it i'm just gonna go because i needed some stuff now but the interesting thing is now i'm in a mindset which i've never been before and i saw the benefit of that with an amazon prime type of membership in terms of grocery delivery is uh pre-planning my groceries five days in advance now i've never really paid attention to the cadence of the food i'm buying and and toiletries and whatever but now i am right and so now i can kind of sort of pre-plan this stuff just put an order in advance and that five-day period is no big deal anymore um now greg i've noticed you've been a little more more liberal before in terms of your going out now by necessity you have to go out for work and stuff too and it doesn't seem like you've been i mean have you been worried really until late of your health or were you sort of like what was your mindset uh, on the whole thing you know that's interesting you say that you know i mean um i'd say three six march 16th mm-hmm. um i was feeling okay and in fact the day before i took the bus mm-hmm. then march 17th then march 18th came and mm-hmm. 19th and all these things started to pop up and said oh i better drive in now or mm-hmm. no, I, no, no. I used to go with another person to kind of be the shotgun with her. Um, she, mm-hmm. She's another leader in the Japantown community that's checking on the merchants. Mm-hmm. And now we're now we've gone to like opposite ends of the earth. We're all mm-hmm. driving separately now, and we're yeah. like taking every other day. And like it's so changed. I mean, it's like I go with gloves and an N95 mask. Um, oh, so you are good for you. Yeah, um, uh, I'll take a shower when I get home after I come right. back. Wow, I mean, good it's for just you. Like, but it's just like, oh my god! It's like I was kind of reflecting on that what you just said the other day because like I remember mm-hmm. when this first thing turned out. I don't know if it was kind of like the boldness in all of us thinking that like, Oh, well, you know, this will just go away in a week. So, mm-hmm. you know, we'll just live normally. And now, you know, three, three, four weeks later, three weeks later, it's not going away. This last part of our stories for the week is, is the, the way we buy food. It's really changed the way we live. I mean, it's yeah. really, it's the flip, right? It isn't the, really the food. It's the way we live now. Right. It's yeah. Like, but like, and I don't know. I mean, and I deal with these merchants who are, nor- yeah, I talked last week, that normally just work on foot traffic, right? And, mm-hmm. and drop in. And um, mm-hmm. and it's just like, you know, I, I mean, I was late because one of them wanted to talk to me. I mean, I'll be mm-hmm. open and honest, right? I mean, and, and I had to give them the time, but, um, yeah. you know, I think it's a, it's a hard struggle, you know, because they have this fixed mindset. Where, sure you know, they, 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 they don't feel they could even, you know, I'm, you know, basically I'm not a, I'm not, I'm a sit down restaurant, not a takeout restaurant. I mean, right. it's like they're, they're, they're digging their heels in on that and that right. makes make some sense maybe, you know, in their right. mind, you know, but, you know, I think, you know, it's, it's going to be one of these things where like, if you're not, it's kind of like, if you're not online now, there's a lot of things you're going to be missing and you know, the train has left the station already and you've better been on it type of thing almost. Yeah. That's fascinating. You say fixed mindset because you're, you're a hundred percent correct. The rules have changed. Absolutely. The reality has changed. So like, it's not a chessboard anymore. You know I mean? It's, you know, a different game now and it, it sounds rather flip, but you do have to be incredibly flexible right now yeah. and uh, agile and um, be able to to move in in different ways quickly again that's easier said than done you know what oh. i mean especially if you've been you know played one game for so long and you've played that game on a very high level um it's uh very difficult yeah 
you know, because like I even asked one of them who've been even through the 89 earthquake, mm-hmm. you know, and that was, you know, that was disruptive too, right? I mean, you mm-hmm. know, but, but not to this proportion. Right? Mm-hmm. People were still able to go out. People were still able to, you know, get things done. I mean, the only thing they had to worry about is electricity and, and make sure the water is running and then we're good to go at that point, right? Mm-hmm. Um, but now, um, even though electricity and water is flowing, they can't go into their businesses, right? So yeah. it's just, uh, man, I, I, I feel for them. And I, I, I hope that there's a quick, quick uh, flattening of the curve, they call it. You know, that's a new, new buzz term, right? Flattening yeah. of the curve. So anyway, let's go into speed round, man. Speed round. <laughs> yeah. So oh, I miss doing that. I miss I'm doing watch- that. Yeah, that's fantastic. I miss that too. Uh, so yeah, so sort of to your point, um, you know, I'm a BJJ, uh, Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu enthusiast. And uh, one of the schools that I'm very particularly interested in, and uh, Jiu-Jitsu teachers, is uh, streaming his classes online, right? And in doing so, he has one other person that he does this with, you know, uh, that they practice with and they stream these videos with each other. And the craziest thing was that he shows in jujitsu, a lot of it are joint manipulation and chokes. And so he's trying to show the best technique of a choke and saying, do that, you know, in this way and that way. And as he's doing it with his partner, I notice his partner is kind of getting limper and limper and limper. And he's talking oh. to the camera. And then sure enough, he's out. And the, the teacher looks at him and is like, oh, oh my God. And it's kind of awkward because you're live on stream. You have God knows how many people watching you because you're a popular online personality of sorts in this particular thing. And they just witnessed you, you know, put your student out effectively unconscious. So uh, it's a kind of weird Whoa. thing to sort of observe. Whoa. I mean, it was, this, this happens in jujitsu. It's just sort of part of the game sometimes, you know. Um, if people don't tap out in time or that type of thing and everyone's proclivity to being, you know, sent unconscious is, is a different thing based on your biology. So I don't know. It was just a crazy thing and, and a weird sign of the times in combination of these live streaming classes now and someone actually being put unconscious online oh and God. the reaction of the, uh, you know, the individuals watching the thing and the teacher uh, himself trying to spin all these plates at the same time in terms of live streaming and trying to do a class online and the safety of the student. Right. That's amazing. Well, I will. I, <laughs> Crazy. Yeah, yeah. Put that link up, man. I got to see that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Let's go to the next one. Well, the list of low cost hobbies, now that you have all this time on your hands, yeah. um, is, is out by life hack. I follow life. hack. They're kind of a productivity kind of, you know, positivity type of, um, type yeah. of web- website. Cool website. Um, yeah. yeah. And so, um, you know, l- let me go through the top 10 with you and tell me yes or no. Okay. I'll, right I'll, let's, let's play that. Uh, DIY. Yes. yes or no. Okay. Yes. Um, write a themed list and work through it. <laughs> I don't know. What no. God, no. No, no. <laughs> uh, watch online documentaries. Yes. Uh, learn new things. Yes. I like to. Okay. Gardening. No. I'd yeah, like to, but nah. Yeah. Okay. Well, here's one that you were talking about earlier. Go camping. <laughs> uh, no. <laughs> yeah. I just watch it on YouTube. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think that happens anymore. Yeah, I, th- yeah. I think this You're was right. done pri- uh, prior uh, COVID-19, but yeah, I, thought, yeah. I thought I'd like to go through this list. Uh, play go- board games, I guess, with your family at home. <laughs> Sometimes. Yeah, yeah. Okay. I like board games. Uh, you're a musician. Uh, discover new music. Yes, yes. Okay. Okay. Uh, Oh. <laughs> scrapbook important events no not my jam that's not my jam yeah no, no. <laughs> okay, and number 10 <laughs> drum roll <laughs> start start knitting start, yeah. that's greg's jam not mine okay right. all right all right let's go to the next one <laughs> All right. So, uh, podcast I'm listening to. Quick update. Let's go to my list. And uh, ones I like is um, an old friend of mine runs the Scrum Master podcast for all you Scrum Masters and Agile enthusiasts out there. Uh, Vasco Duarte has a fantastic podcast called the Scrum Master Podcast. Definitely give that a listen to. And another podcast, an interesting one that I really like uh, in terms of productivity as well, personal productivity, 
is uh, the Getting Thing Done Getting Things Done podcast, the GTD podcast with David Allen, who is obviously the author and creator of the GTD methodology, if you will. Uh, it's a very interesting podcast. He has individuals, luminaries, uh, business executives, musicians, and therefore he talks about his uh, methodology and their in terms of how it integrates with their life and business. And it's, it's really cool. So that's what I'm listening to right now. All right, let's go next yeah. one. Well, wow, resources for education, you know, the whole world's changed, as we said earlier, about now everyone has to be online, right, for right. education, right, especially kids, you know, K through 12, right, and yeah. so um, there's this website I picked up the other day, um, it's called The Journal, Transforming Education Through Technology, and so every day they update resources that, you know, I think you know, are low cost or free to use for educators, and if you're doing homeschooling, you know, that type of thing, check this out. We'll put the link in there below and um, you could look at all the way. I, I was like surprised. I think I counted 130 on Monday when I released this on our mm -hmm. channel. And I think it's up to well, over 150 now. So it's, it's crazy, wow. you know, wow. but, but it, it just goes to show you. I mean, there were things like, um, well, this is science news for students, you know, that's something that's not too exciting, but I mean, mm. there's things like that where you could find different types of uh, uh, resources. It's in alphabetical order. So don't go, go through the whole list, you know, don't stop at mm -hmm. the A's, you know, but uh, there's a lot of historical stuff on there as well, as well as just, um, you know, Wiley books even has something. So um, very cool. The yeah. There's a ton of stuff out there. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, cool. All right, man. So tip time, tip time. Tip time so tip I got time. a couple of tips. Yeah, cool, cool, um, yeah. So one tip is a from Dr. Justin Marcachani, who I mentioned on about the, our last week's episode or last episode, I should say. Um, he recommended a, a morning drink or a drink to drink throughout the day. It's a ginger drink and it sort of helps with your immunity and kind of clears out the stuff and in your uh, throat and chest. And um, it's basically what you do. I'll just give you, I'll, I'll also include the YouTube video of him doing this. Uh, you just take a couple of nubs of ginger, throw it in a blender, put that little bit of water, about a, you know, a couple inches of water in the, in the blender. It's going to be kind of weird me explaining it. Get half a um, lime, squeeze that into that, into that blender as well. Maybe a, a tablespoon of honey, drop that in, boil some water, blend that up while you're doing that. As the water is boiling, um, pour the after blended remnants into a coffee press, a uh, French press, and then get that uh, boiling water and add it on top. You know, get about, fill that, you know, that, that French press up, depending on your size or halfway up, depending on what you, you have, a larger regular sized, uh, press that down. And then you just sip that, you know, you filter out so you don't get any of that uh, ginger um, stuff in your, in your drink. You press that down so it filters that out and you got yourself a really wonderful drink throughout the day. I've been doing it every day. Me and my mom giving it to us and we feel great. I used to have a lot of grossness in my chest and upper chest area and now I'm all cleared out and it's wonderful. So that and then uh, the other thing I was going to recommend to everyone also is just to go out and get some sun. I'm feeling like you know, we're all inside and it's sunny outside, depending on where you are. And uh, it's, it's important to get out there and get some, uh, some sunlight, some vitamin D on your skin. Yeah, kind of that's great. Brings, you know, your whole mindset up. That's great. And then uh, what's, uh, and, and then I think the last part of it is one thing that I saw online that is just something that will just kind of help uh, calm us is that I saw this was kind of cool. Um, there's only, there's one way to make sure that you wake up every day feeling calm, joyful, and blessed out is to adopt the attitude of gratitude. So that's a tip for the day. For sure, for sure. And something I'm grateful for, and I'd like to mention too, is like, you know, in this, in this process, friends have been just reaching out to me. Some friends I haven't even heard from in forever. And one guy who just called me on the phone and I heard his voice and I hadn't talked to him in years and it was just the best thing. And, uh, and I keep journal and part of it is a gratitude as well. And that was one of the things I entered the other day was I was just so grateful to hear a friend reach out to me on the phone and, uh, and it'll just lift your spirits. Hopefully you can actually make someone else's day and check in on people around you and they'll probably be happy to hear from you. Yeah. Wednesdays I'm picking as a day. I'm going to reach out to as many people as I can. I think that's, oh, that's nice. awesome. So yesterday is a day I chose that and, it was nice. Uh, like, like you, I, I, I called a person I haven't worked with in 20 years, kind of like you. Wow. Just imagine. And just to hear what he was doing was just 
made me so happy because like he you know i knew him as a young manufacturing engineer and now you know he's a program manager at abbott labs and wow know, doing great things and i That's was just amazing. happy for him yeah and it's just you know um it it it, it tells you how fast we're spending our lives mm -hmm. you know and this thing has just slowed it down to a time where we could actually think about that so it's nice yeah to be grateful, That's really nice. grateful for that so yeah all right man on that note that's a good one. We'll yeah, wind this up. Do it. It's we, a wrap. We on the internet. All right, everyone. <laughs> Thanks. Thanks for All watching right. another one and listening up. I am Adolfo Fronda. You can check us out at nerdstalker.com, Nerdstalker TV on YouTube, and all of the socials. And Greg, yeah. how about you? Yeah. Where can they find you? Well, if you like this podcast, you know, you see it on a, give it a like, man. Give it a like. Give us yeah, a like. Up. Like our page. Yeah. And then subscribe. also, you know, subscribe, please, down below. Hit that bell. Hit, Hit that bell. bell. Crunch that bell, everyone. And then, um, you know, you'll check us out on iTunes and all the popular places for the audio and video or just things and, and rate Give us. Give us a nice so. review. And yeah. you can catch me on Twitter. I'm called Social Greg. So. Right on. All right. Thanks for watching and listening, everyone. Take care. Peace. See ya.